Once you've diversified your portfolio with equities, bonds, and commodities, you want to look for some alternative investments, ones that won't be tied to equity markets if you're nervous. How will it preserve your capital and give you a little growth? Will some high net worth investors opt for art or jewels as an alternative investment? Others choose wine. Now, the cost of storing, insuring, and even the extra costs at wine auctions can make it pricey and difficult to do. Investment funds, though, have cropped up in the last decade, and they take those extra hassles out of the equation for a fee, of course. David Kaufman is president of West Coast Cap Capital, and he thinks people should take a serious look at wine investment funds. So these are funds of funds. Now, we, uh, we've seen in the past there were art funds. Do these do well? Do you think this is actually a good vehicle? I do. I, let's remember what we're trying to achieve with, you know, in the general class of alternative investments is that we want low correlation to the equity markets, uh, capital preservation, low volatility, and some moderate returns. And because of the nature of investment quality wines, mostly Bordeaux from France, uh, they have sort of uh, the, the unique characteristics where they are controlled from a point of view of supply people drink them, so there's consumption, you have spoilage, and you have this enormous uh, growth and demand from places like China. And so that's a good macro investment thesis for, for any commodity or any security, but in wine specifically. So they've had excellent returns in the last 10 years, even during the financial crisis. I suppose there is some risk here in terms of liquidity. I mean, how do you get in and out of that? If you put, let's say, half a million dollars to work, you buy into this assumption, and then two years later you want to get it back. What happens? It's true that, I mean, as, as with any investment fund, this is a private equity fund, and so essentially an investment manager is, is gathering investor assets and then deploying it across a diversified portfolio, in this case of wine. Uh, and so uh, it is liquid in the sense that there is an enormous uh, market for wine. It's not liquid in the sense that you can buy it and sell it in two minutes the way you might with, uh, with other equities. But because of the size of the market, it's relatively easy to get in and get out, especially if it's bonded, which is a special system they use uh, in the UK to guarantee the provenance of the wine, which helps people know that it's been stored correctly and that it uh, isn't counterfeit. Uh, I love that people at home are thinking, oh, this is interesting. I might put $10,000 into that. And Kevin's like, what if you have half a million dollars to invest? <laughs> uh, if, but, but to his point, are there certain levels to play in this market? Do you have to have a certain amount of capital to even be allowed in the door? Actually, most of these funds have minimums of uh, $10,000. And as with other alternatives, you generally, if you're doing it from Canada, have to be an accredited investor, which means generally high net worth. But they are run as mutual funds, offshore mutual funds. So it's actually up to the investor, uh, not, up to, uh, not up to the fund, to determine what your tax uh, tax implications might be and of course to determine the status in the jurisdiction that you're investing from. Now there is a way to emulate this model yourself. Just put a wine cellar in your basement. You can even buy one of these wine fridges that holds hundreds of bottles. I have a few of those. Just buy the wine futures anywhere in Canada you can do that in Bordeaux. They're expensive but if you believe this 10-year thesis and then you own the wine yourself and the added benefit is you can take a nip of the portfolio once in a while, right? Is there anything better than consumption? As, you know, if, if the value is going down, you can always, of course, back up with, with, by, con, by consuming it. You can do that yourself. The only issue is that if you want to do it on a macro level and, and achieve the kind of diversification, 10% of all wine is corked, and so you're taking a pretty big risk on the way in. And if you ever want to sell your entire cellar, you're going to be looking at paying 10, 20, 30 percent commissions if you do it through the traditional auction houses. We're looking at the fee of a, the wine investment fund, 20 percent of uh, profit. At, that sounds high to me in terms of the value you're going to get for the diversification. So can we justify the fee? Well, it's, you know, fees, of course, uh, are a big question for any fund. And 2 and 20 is sort of your standard uh, private equity fund. And the only good news about it is that if you're paying a big fee, that means that the 80 percent that you're left with from the profits is a big number itself. I think that's a great point. I mean, uh, the, the, the issue that this, when I looked at it, and art funds are the same, mm -hmm. you have to have a really long-term view. You've got to have a five to seven year view because you may just not get out. And I'm talking about putting significant capital to work. If you really believe you should have an alternate allocation, that might be five, 10, 15 percent of your portfolio. But it's long-term money. It I mean, is, let's be clear about it. It right? is long-term money. On the other hand, you know, as you have people to buy low beta, high dividend paying equities, they are doing that for the long term as well. And the fact that they could sell it in 10 minutes, even though they never will, uh, is not much solace uh, during, during volatile times. And so there's no question that the volatility is smooth because of the long term. But on the other hand, many people have some capital that they'd like to appreciate in an uncorrelated way over a five to seven in year In terms period. of what drives the value of the underlying uh, commodity here, is it 
consumption, new wealthy, uh, the new wealthy in places like China or India? What, what's going to keep this growing? Well, when the, when the curve looks more like a hockey stick, it has a lot less to do with supply and a lot more to do with demand. And so the enormous demand that comes out of places like China, the, yeah. the, the, not just the emerging middle class, but, but uh, the wealth across the world in general, uh, once they get a taste for something like fine red wine, uh, that's hard to kick. Yeah, as Kevin will tell you. David, great to have you here. Thanks for having me. David Kaufman, president of Westcourt Capital.